Hi, y'all. Let's talk a little bit about the fear-mongering of the left and how Donald Trump is, clearly, a tremendous threat to the Constitution of the United States and, in particular, that pesky First Amendment. Now, anyone who watches my channel knows I'm all in favor of uh, the U.S. Constitution and defending its liberties against uh, excesses of government. So, what are the great crimes against free speech that the Donald is going to uh, visit upon the people of the United States? Well, let's walk through them. So, uh, one of the uh, examples of the evil to come is when he said he was going to open up the libel laws so that way, when newspapers print maliciously false lies about him, he can take them to court and win money. Now, there is a story there to be told, um, but the media missed it, because one of the problems with the media is they don't really understand how to deal with the Donald Trump because they work very hard at being terminally obtuse whenever they think it's going to be convenient for them. And so if it's a... Uh, if they want to take everything he says literally, they're going to be perpetually shooting themselves in the foot. And he knows that this is how they react. He knows that you give them a little bit of razzle-dazzle, and they turn terminally retarded. And he exploits that. And they're too stupid to catch on how uh, they're being used. So the story they tell is, is the one of, uh, well, you know, suing people and changing the law so he can sue people. That isn't the story. The story is... Mr. Trump inadvertently correctly states the current law. He might as well have stood up there and said, In the future, when I'm elected, I'm going to make sure that the law tomorrow is exactly what the law is right this very second. Suck on that, bitches! But he didn't seem to know that the current law is what it is. What he said, though, is actually a statement of our constitutional law. Um, if you are a public figure, you may sue news organizations for maliciously false claims. The Constitution of the United States, the First Amendment in particular, does not now and has never protected against uh, defamation of character, willful, knowing, malicious defamation of character, or a reckless disregard for learning facts that you should have tried to learn if you're going to be a news organization. They've always been subject to being sued. The reason they don't get sued uh, by presidents isn't because there's uh, a law that prevents it, it's just not going to play well with the electorate. And as uh, presidents learn when they get into office, they are suddenly going to find that their time is really, really spoken for all day long. They'll be tremendously busy, and they're not going to have a lot of time to sit around suing people, which is why uh, I think you're seeing Trump settling his lawsuits, because he realizes, once I get into office, shit's going to get real. I'm not going to have the time to be doing depositions, and it's just easier for me to go ahead and get rid of all this nonsense uh, right now today, pay them whatever they're asking for, you know, make a good deal, that kind of thing. So the media does that, and they get, they get distracted, and they fail to, they, they show their incompetence, because there you have a guy who's claiming he's going to change the law to be exactly what it is today. Now, I remember some years ago, like, I'm going to turn around 360 degrees, you know, because that puts you right back where you are. That kind of joke got people's attention because it showed the ignorance of the person speaking it. Donald Trump was showing his ignorance, whether he knew it or not, whether he knew what the law was or didn't know what the law was is neither here nor there. The statement, as told, is that uh, you know, he did not seem to know what the current law is, which is a curious area to explore if you're a journalist. Now, another way to look at it would be the way that journalists should appreciate um, Donald Trump and Ann Coulter. I find myself surprised to say is actually the person who best understands this, and she told the media about this all throughout the. Uh, the uh, campaign. She goes, you guys make the mistake of failing to take Donald Trump seriously while insisting that he must be taken literally. He's a bullshitter. If he catches 10 fish, he's going to tell you he caught 20. But he really caught 10. Now, that is, he exaggerates. When he is in one of those moments where he's talking, like, I'm going to open up the libel laws, he's venting the frustration. He is channeling the frustration that people have. No, uh, only the, the leftists take it seriously that the president, through this magic power that presidents don't have, is going to reverse a decision of the Supreme Court and alter the 200-some-odd uh, year history of the United States Constitution. They're the only idiots who buy into that. So when he says it, they focus on that and ignore the substance of what's actually been said. So it's perfectly possible to dangle like, uh, to, I guess Lewis Black did this about President Bush, and how he, he had to have handlers. He's like, handlers? What, in case he gets hungry and wants to go bite a Democrat? What do you do, just 
grabs some meat to distract him. That's what Trump does. He holds up some meat to distract the, uh, the rabid dogs of the left-wing media. They run towards the meat, and while he's holding it over there, you know, they're like that, that kid who's got the hand on his forehead trying to swing, hitting nothing but air. And so while they're over there doing that, he sticks his hand out, keeps him at bay, and then he talks to, to his people and, uh, that work quite well for him. So what are, what are the other ways that he is imperiling the republic? Well, the, the Donald has discovered an ancient, age-old uh, secret of oppression. He has figured out how to use Twitter. And apparently, sometimes on Twitter, he vents his frustration with stupidity that other people do. You know, when people like the Hamilton cast, in particular is what I'm thinking of, he did nothing more than use his own private rights to freedom of speech to express an opinion about what the Hamilton cast did. Now, I didn't read in that tweet, and I looked hard for it. Uh, P.S. Once I'm sworn in, the 82nd Airborne's knocking on your door, motherfuckers. So I, maybe that was in a follow-up tweet, and I just am not savvy enough with the internets to be able to figure it out, but I didn't quite spot that. He is a private citizen right now. He will be the president. That he is going to be the president, and even when he is the president, incidentally, he does not lose his rights as a citizen. He is still perfectly free uh, to have an opinion and to express that opinion. I think the, the surest way you know it's not an ex-cathedra statement of government policy by which government officers will be uh, compelled to either act or to have to make a decision between choosing between following an order or disobeying a lawful order, is that instead of it coming from an official document or you know the White House with, a, with a, you know, the imprimatur of the actual government official, it's happening on Twitter. But the media are too stupid to, uh, pick this, to pick this up, and so they are again going to be distracted by this. Donald Trump... Uh, you know, they like to complain about the fact that he's an entertainer turned president. They seem to uh, forget that he had really decent ratings as an entertainer. He knows how to do this, and he is playing them for the fools that they are eagerly showing themselves to be. And, of course, there is the issue about burning the flag and how he said that he wants to make it a criminal offense and take away someone's citizenship for it. I don't know if he actually believes that. I seriously doubt it, and I hope it's not true, but... Even if it is true, he will be appointing, uh, just suppose that uh, the president does this. How would the president do it? Well, he'd have to go through Congress to get a law, which isn't going to happen, and then he'd have to sign that law, and then it would have to be enforced in the courts, which wouldn't happen. There is binding precedent on this. The fifth vote for the decision striking down such laws was none other than Justice mm -hmm. Scalia himself. The very model of the judge... Uh, that he has in mind for the person who's going to be replacing Scalia. And if you put a Scalia on a court to replace the Scalia who's no longer on the court because he died, and such a case reappears in the same court, that a, a court that Scalia was on, you should expect you're going to get a similar outcome, which is to say that the law will fall. And even uh, taking away someone's citizen, citizenship, I don't know how you're going to do that, but best of luck. Anyway, it's just fear-mongering in part. Uh, it is the pretends to have a story in another part. If you remember when the Corey Lewandowski incident happened where the reporter claimed to have been abused by Corey Lewandowski and then Trump at, the, uh, at one of the debates or one of the interviews or whatever says, oh, but she grabbed my arm. It's never been the same since. And Anderson Cooper's like, so are you saying that your arm was injured? You know, Mr. Want to be the president? Anderson Cooper's showing that he too is too stupid to figure out sarcasm. He doesn't understand hyperbole. He doesn't understand Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is playing him like a cheap flute. Which is strange for Anderson Cooper. He should be the one who knows how to play the flute. Anyway, putting that off to the side. Uh, the media just is in love with showing how incompetent that they are. And they wonder, why are our approval ratings like, you know, in the single digits? Why are we as, just as unpopular as Congress? Here's an idea. It's because you keep fucking hiring people because of their political views rather than their competence. And it's also curious to note for the uh, supposed self-reflection the media claims it's going to do, boink, none of these reporters have been fired, none of the uh, executives have been discharged for their incompetence. It's the same old thing. Over, all you're going to do is see in the future what you've seen today, and then you're going to have uh, these people wandering, uh, you know, wandering around in the future wondering why it is they still don't get it. And the, way, the best way that you know this is that in the wake of their, uh, seeing that their candidate and their predictions were all wrong and they lost, they sat around and talked to each other about what they missed. 
What they didn't do is have the foresight to figure out, perhaps we should go talk to the people who voted our guy out of office, out of power, our party out of power, and ask them why they kicked us out, rather than telling them why they did it. Anyway, I look forward to seeing the media continue to fail. I am enjoying the butthurt. Have a great day.